God be the glory. Good evening, good evening, my brothers and my sisters. We're going to open with a prayer. Open tonight with a prayer in an effort that God will bless us. Dear Father our God, we come thankful for another opportunity to just gather in your name. Though it's on Zoom and Facebook, though it's on conference call, we tell you thank you for keeping us together, keeping us in touch, keeping us in tune with one another. We pray, Master, that we will not faint, neither give up because of our identity together. We pray that you will bind us as one, strengthen us, that we'll be able to endure this time of separation. We can endure this this time of video conference calls and, and Facebooks and bless us to hold on and hold up during it all, Master. And then, God, we ask that you would use us to your glory. Bless us tonight as we converse with your people. Use me in a mighty way. Bless me that I might be a blessing. Thank you now for all of your many blessings in the name of of our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen and amen. Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and my sisters. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. You on Facebook, you that are on Zoom, you that are on a conference call, we certainly welcome you tonight. We're not going to be before you long, but we just thought we should share some things um, that the Lord has placed on my heart. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing us uh, to invade some of your Friday night relaxation time. I know you've had a long week. You've gone through much. And here this preacher is called in another family hour. He always doing something. Yes. I thank you for putting up with me and allowed me to be used in God's service. I just feel that we need to uh, constantly uh, stay in contact. You just never know who might need a word upon this night. You you never know who uh, feel like giving up. Amen. You don't know where people are. And so I thank God that he gives me the strength. He gives me the wherewithal. He allows me to come before his people. And, and I thank God that I have people that I can go before. And I thank God for my wife, works that camera. She really helps me out. Sister Duffel says she, she makes me look, she says that every, every pastor's anniversary, I'm gonna let the word out. That girl makes you look good again. <laughs> I know, I think I've been dressed up, but she be out dressing me, but that's all right. Thank God she's working behind the camera. Praise and I thank God. God for her. Praise God. But tonight, I wanted to just thank God for uh, Sister Sister uh, Huntley and Reverend Huntley and Sister Meteor Wright and Brother Tyrone Wright. Amen. For their efforts in getting those meals out to the to the family. They they got it all coordinated and friendship. You would be be so so pleased at, at the way that they did it in such a a loving fashion that they got the plates out. I thank God for the Coonies getting the plates out and the meals out today to the homeless, to those that are living outside. They're giving them sleeping uh, uh, sleeping bags and to keep their bodies warm and all of that. And certainly, I thank God for all who's been assisting in that ministry. And if you're not uh, I want you to pray about it and get involved in, in trying to help someone uh, who's hurting and try to help someone, <clears throat> excuse me, who's just, who's living outside, you know. It could be my son. It could be your child. It could be your neighbor. Uh, it could be me or you next week, the way, the way things are going. We don't know from moment to moment. And so pray about trying to see what you can do to uh, properly help someone that is hurting. Speaking of which, 
Deacon Cooney and Deaconess Cooney got their visas uh, on a couple of weeks ago. I know that they were scheduled to go out and leave us going to uh, Europe, I believe, in, in, in June of 2020. And uh, because of the pandemic and all of the, 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 the workings in that uh, arena, they, they weren't able to progress and they've been, they've been blessed to be here and been such a blessing by their continued uh, service here. And so their visas uh, were cleared um, a couple of weeks ago and now they got their marching orders. To, so the second week of December uh, should be their last week and they'll be over in England, over in Europe. But they're going to be um, uh, remaining with us continuing in the uh, uh, the Zooms and the, and the uh, conference call and the Facebooks and all of that because even over there, there's, there's still a lockdown. And so, be that as it may, I thank God that, that they will stay connected to us. Amen. And we certainly appreciate them. I believe that they're even going to keep the Sunday school going. That is their intention. So I want, I, I want to encourage Tonight, I want to encourage every uh, parent, every grandparent, every uh, member of friendship. You know some some young person, some some uh, uh, youth, child, some youth, or some young adult that can benefit from from Sunday school teaching. They they they, uh, they got it every Sunday morning. They were here. They were being blessed with the pandemic. We no longer are allowed to gather. And so uh, thank God that friendship has maintained their uh, Sunday school classes. By God, I, I, when I heard Sister Huntley, Sister Huntley, did, everybody did so well. But when she did that talk on that uh, a Sunday at the, I, I did not know I was tribute. that tribute. I didn't know I was doing all of that. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I thank God for all that that, that went on. But. But certainly, it, it lets you know we are busy here at Friendship. We, 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 are, we are constantly trying to keep in, engaged, keep our people engaged. And, and, and I thank God that the people are, are, are continuing in being engaged. And I thank God that they can cut the television off and listen to the preacher for just a little while. Thank you so much for spending that time with us. Now, uh, Yes, as of yesterday, our governor has has put us back in the purple zone. So we 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 jumped two tiers because of the our numbers have been elevated. Now what we're going to do at Friendship, we're going to do what we've been doing. Those of you that uh, signed up to come on first Sunday, come on. Those of you second, third, fourth, come on. Amen. Mask up, your coffin, stay home. All of our rules apply. We are, we've been safe and we've been responsible. And I want to commend and thank all of Friendship for doing that. But what we are going to do, I'm going to stop the choir. So we'll, we'll begin solos. Um, solos to, to, to be sang um, during time, during worship. And so we call on you. We're asking you to be ready to sing us a, a solo behind the shield. Because the the uh, the uh, uh, the greatest spreader they say is the singing and the vocal the, the pushing and all of that. So we're gonna limit limit that by, by by one person. And so I thank God that that uh, that the choir, the Deacon Shote, uh, and and Sister Kirkland understand that the choir will hold off for a little while. But we're gonna continue with everything else that we've been doing. I even asked the dancers to stop, but I'm going to reverse that. Let the dancers dance. Let the dancers dance. They, they're sitting so far in the back. They, they dance on the second and the fourth Sunday. Sister Jaquita, if you're listening to me, go ahead and dance. Uh, let, the, uh, let the dance troupe dance if the Lord says the same. Masked up. Amen. Mask up and come on in. Let's have us a great old, great old time. In the well, if you have a chat, 
you want to you wanna ask me a question or you have a comment, please uh, uh, send it to my wife's uh, uh, text. You can text me or you can chat on Zoom or, uh, I, and all of that. And I'll be able to, properly, I'll be able to respond. She said Mary Johnson, she's also helping with delivering those meals. Amen. Sister Mary, Sister Mary Johnson, thank you. Sister Mary Johnson is Sister helping Johnson. delivering those meals. And I thank God for Sister Johnson. Oh, sister, my, my, that's, that's, my, that's my songbird. We thank God for Sister Mary Johnson. And while I'm thinking of that, uh, thank the Bakewell Company, the Bakewell Company, Brother Danny Bakewell Jr. and Brother Danny Bakewell Sr. They donated 10 uh, 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 turkey baskets that were put together. They got it from uh, Brother Daryl Chote's uh, store. He boxed them up for friendship. And so I asked Deacon Chote to, to take those out to 10 families, whoever was in need. And so I pray that he's done that. I, I, he told me he was doing that. And if you have a need and you want, want something, please contact uh, one of the deacons or contact Sister Wright or contact the Huntleys. And they'll be glad and real. I'll contact Sister Mary Johnson. They'll be glad to get a meal to you. There's no need of you eating or, or, or being without some food when there's such an abundance that we can do together. We can muster up. Amen. With all of them lines going on in Texas and oh, yes. them food lines, I thank God for people like the Bakewell that will give the church some, uh, 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 some, th some things to go out. I, I appreciate Amen. that. All right. In our reading assignment, it is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 40 through the 17th chapter, and verse 24. Amen? The 10th chapter through the 17th chapter. It's a... Uh, it's a good piece of a, a lot of information, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of I'm breeze through it. I, I get I have to stop just a little a few times. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get right through it, so yeah, I, I can get you on your way in a short short while. At uh, ten and thirty eight in two verses, previous to our beginning, we see where. Jesus visits Martha and Mary. That's at 10 at 38. And they received him and, 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 and they opened their house. And Mary and Martha were two sisters. One of them fussing about she doing all the cooking and the cleaning and her sisters sitting at the feet of Jesus. But when Jesus is conversing, you ought not try to serve him. You ought to be trying to listen to him. And then we open up immediately in the 11th chapter. The, the disciples came and they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. They saw the power that he had. They saw his ability to converse with God and how the con con his conversation with God, they figured, is what made him strong in the work of God. They said, Lord, whatever you're doing, teach us how to do it, which is teach us how to pray. And then at 11 and 40, where there is a, uh, the healing of a, 11 and 14, I should say, where there's a healing of a dumb, demonic spirit who was beating up on a little boy that some say is that when Jesus healed him and, and delivered the, the, the little boy, uh, they said he delivers by the name of Beelzebub. He had, in other words, devil kick it out of devils. And Jesus says, no, it's, it's not that at all. If I, uh, the son of God, deliver by the finger of God, you ought to give God my father the glory. And then he goes into... The 11 and 24, he talks about the journey of an unclean spirit. See, when the devil leaves, the devil, this is real, 
when the spirit of the devil leaves, you got to go somewhere. You, you, and you, you ever see it when you're interacting with people and, and people getting on your nerve or be, before you know it, you cussing like them, you acting like them. The, the devil didn't jump off them and, and then got all upside your head. But that's because the devil, when he's dismissed, he's got to go somewhere. And so Jesus at 11 and 24 talked about he journeys into a desert place. And when he don't like where he at, the first thing he does is try to come back to his house. And when he finds his house clean and garnished, he try to move back in with seven more evil demons. And so Jesus says, an empty heart makes room for the demons. When your heart is not open to receive the word of God, you might have all the intelligence in the world. People might be some of the nicest, kindest people that you know. Mm -hmm. But if their heart is not filled with the spirit of God, oh, yes. if their heart is not filled with the word of God, mm -hmm. then that demon is going to come right back and take up residence. Yes, sir. 11 and 27, um, they talked about Jesus, your mama <laughs> is blessed. Oh, blessed are the paps that you that, that gave break a, a life to you. Jesus said, no. Blessed are they that hear the word of God yes, sir. and keep it. And True it. blessings mm. is not because you, Jesus, is blood, brother and sister. Mm -mm. It's because uh, you hear the word, believe the word, and keep the word. 1129, Jesus uh, talks about this is an evil generation. He talking about y'all waiting on a sign from Jonah. Like, like a, there ain't going to be no sign. Only sign you going to be. Uh, the, the, when Jonah was preaching, he turned that whole world around. Mm. And then he said, better than Jonah is here. Mm. He said, now you're not going to see no sign. You, you, you're not going to see no sign. So mm. stop looking for signs to fall out the sky and all that. Just trust in the Lord. Mm. 11.33, he tells you, let your light shine. Whatever you do, don't put your light under a bushel. So many quiet Christians, so, so many silent saints, folk don't even know you're saved. Your neighbor don't even know you're saved. Well, you got to learn how to let your light shine. Stop trying to live as dark as you can. Try to let your light so shine everywhere that you Go. 11 and 37, Jesus denounces Pharisees and lawyers. Uh, 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 a, a Pharisee spoke to him and said, Lord, come eat with me. Jesus went down and dined with him. And when the Pharisee saw it, and, and he marveled, saying that he, he didn't even wash his hands. And Jesus said, Well, you fellas trying to wash your hands. But your heart is unclean. So no matter how you get the outside clean, we mm. can doll up the outside. Right, but right. when the heart is full of hate, yes. when the heart is full of hell, it will always give out hell. And so don't worry about cleaning up the outside. You clean up. Let, it, let the outside begin from the inside. Yes, inside sir. out. Then 1149, Jesus gets to talking about how many divine messengers will be persecuted. All right. Chapter number 12. In number 12, Jesus uh, began to talk about how all of the hypocrisy, the, the phoniness, the, the pretenders, the play actors, that, that, that folk that going through the motion, but they're really not saved. Folk that know how to say, Lord, Lord, maybe even know how to heal bodies, maybe even know how to deliver folk from demons. But in the end, Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you works of iniquity. Hypocrisy will be discovered. 12 and 4, Jesus says, you need to Fear God. Don't worry about the man that can kill the body. Mm. You need to worry about the one that can kill the body and then throw the soul 
in eternal hell. Fear God. And then at verse number 8 of that same chapter, 12 and 8, he says, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man confess before my Father. And then at 1213, he talks about a prosperous farmer. He talks about a prosperous farmer. It says, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a Jew? And Jesus says, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. It's wonderful to have possessions, but don't let your possessions possess you. Realize that we have an end to this side, but thank God we realize none of our possessions are going to go with us. And then in verse 16, he talks about the parable of a certain rich man who brought forth so much that he began to pray within himself, talking about, what shall I do? Uh, I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this I will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater barns. There will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night. Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lays up treasure for himself. It is not rich toward God. That's why I'm, I do my best to send up my timber. I do my best to never uh, uh, neglect trying to help somebody. I do my, do my best. I want to try to be rich toward the things of God. I want God to be pleased. And you ought to want God to be pleased in the things that you do. Amen. You ought to want God to be pleased in putting him before yourself. Oh, yes. Then at verse 22, that Jesus warns against having earthly anxiety. Listen, you can't add one cubit hmm. to how tall you're going to be. You're right. You, 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 he said, you may as well trust in the ones that have Trust in the one that has your hairs numbered. <laughs> he has your hairs numbered. He has you in his heart. Then it goes on to uh, the uh, exhortation to holy ambition. If then, verse number 28, if then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? And seek not ye that ye shall eat of what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father hmm. knoweth that ye have need of these things. Oh, yes. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Then in verse 34 it says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart mm. be. And then he picks up in verse 41. Peter said, Lord, speakest thou par this parable unto us or even at all? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler in due season his Lord Behold, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion. And that servant which knew the Lord's will and prepared not himself. See, it's time to get ready because the Lord is on his way. I said the Lord is on his way. 
And you got to realize the Lord is going to come when there's so much confusion, when there's so much uh, trouble, when there's so much turmoil. The time is right now. Oh, yes. Christ, the, 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 the reappearing of Christ, the second coming of Christ is imminent. Imminent means it can happen at any time. It don't have to happen right now. It don't have to happen right, right away. But it means it can happen right now. It can happen immediately. There is no more waiting time. So the, Im the imminence of Christ tells us, stay ready. Be ye ready. Oh, Mother Sarah Lewis used to always say that funny statement. I ain't in the get ready. I'm in the be ready section. You got to be ready for when the Lord gets ready to come back again. And then in verse number 54, he talks about how folk can see clouds rising in the distance and can tell it's going to rain. They can see different signs in, in, the, in the climate and tell when things are going to transpire. But they can't or they won't see the signs of time. God is telling you, be ye ready. Verse chapter 13. Chapter 13 is a good chapter. Chapter 13. Verse 1, he begins with talking about a call to repentance. Then he, then he goes into verse 6, dealing with the parable of the fig tree. That fig tree at verse number 6 that's supposed to have fruit on it because Jesus came seeking fruit and he didn't have no fruit and so the owner said Lord don't cut it don't cut it down let me dung around it let me get it prepared that's what God is doing right now he's preparing us even right now then at chapter number 13 at verse number 10 he's teaching in the synagogue and then there's a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years that she was bowed down and could no wise lift herself up. She was, she was, she was bent over. She couldn't help. She, she, she couldn't elevate her head. But Jesus loosed her as, as, as low as she was, as inconspicuous as she was. She wasn't visible with all the other people in the distance and the people in the congregation. But Jesus saw her, which, may, which means you might not be much in your eyes and you mm -hmm. might not be much in people's eyes. Well, but thank God you'll never be, we'll never be in insignificant in you. the master's eyes. He sees your condition and he knows how to handle our Need. Hallelujah to that right there. Then he deals with verse 18 with the parable of the mustard seed. How it can be the smallest, but it grows up to be the largest. And the leaven of how you get just a little bit in there and it swells up the whole lump. And that's what believers ought to do. They ought to cause an effect of growth in people. They ought to cause an effect. I, I pray that my 27 years, I've caused you to, ch I challenge you to grow in the things of God. I challenge you to grow in the word of God. That, that's, that's my ministry, is to teach you to become a teacher. Amen. Then 13 at 22, he says, straight is, look, there's 13 and 31, excuse me. He, he laments over Jerusalem. All that he wants to do, they don't want nothing to do with him. They come to him and tell him, Herod going to kill you. Jesus says, go tell that fox. I heal today. I do great work tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. <laughs> That's the Lord telling me, I'm going to die, but I'm going to get up. Yes, sir. Chapter number 14, as we work Quickly through here, verse number one, Jesus healed that dropsical man, that man who was swollen with, 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 with water. He, his, his, he was retaining water. He had the dropsies. 
But thank God Jesus healed him on the Sabbath day and everybody got mad. Then look at chapter 14, verse number 15. Verse 15, we see the parable of the Great Supper when Jesus lays out this beautiful supper. He lays it out and tells them, come on, uh, I, I got a supper for you. I've already prepared it. All you got to do is show up. I even got the forks and the spoons. You just show up with an appetite. And wouldn't you know it? It would, Nobody would want to come. They had excuses. They had an excuse at verse 18. Talking about, I have bought a piece of ground. I got to go take a look at it. Another one in 19, I bought five yoke of oxen. I got to go try it. Another one, number 20, said, I married a wife. You, you know I can't come. But the servant told his master that the master was angry. He said, go out to the streets. Go everywhere and get them and tell them, come and eat at my feast. And there still was room. And the Lord said, go to the highways and the hedges and the byways and invite them to come. And that's our mission. Our mission is to make sure that the Lord's house is full. We ought to make sure that the banquet is going to be full. We we, we, we want There's going to be a great banquet in the heaven when we leave here. Thank there's going to be a great Thank banquet. And we want to make sure that we have as many guests as we can. We're going to be guests. We want to bring all of our friends, all of our family, even all of our enemies to make sure that we have them at the great banquet of the Lord. Don't think anybody's too low. Don't Amen. think anybody is unworthy. Amen. Everyone has an opportunity. If he calls you to the banquet, he wants yes, the, you to call them to the banquet. <clears throat> Verse number 25, where Jesus told them the great cost of true religion. He said, if any man hate not his father, mother, and wife, and children, brothers, and sisters, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus is saying, you got to put me first. He ain't telling you to hate your mama and your dad. Because the truth of the matter is, when you put Jesus first, you're going to love your mama and your dad. Amen. When Amen. you put Jesus first, you're going to love each other properly. Amen. I wish I had a witness here. Yes, sir. When you, when you put Jesus first, things fall in order. Thank you. Our problem is because Jesus ain't there, our love is always conditional. Mercy, Lord. Because mom and dad didn't do this for me. Because my brother and sister Mercy. don't do this for me. But when you love Jesus first, yes, sir. when you put him first, everything else Say that, Pastor. falls in the proper priority. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then verse number 30 when it's the parable of the king going to war. He says, every king that goes to war uh, sits down first and consults whether he be able with 10,000 hmm. to meet and to defend and to fight against him that cometh at him with twice the size at 20,000. Or else while the other way is yet a great way off, he sends us an, an, an ambassage and desirous conditions of peace. Listen, so likewise, uh, he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be hmm. my disciple. Hmm. You got to realize God is coming and you can't whoop God. Amen. But God is on his way and you or your whole army will never outpower one of his little fingers. Never, ever, ever. Then verse 34, he says, salt is good. But if the salt has lost its savor, Wherewith shall it be seasoned? If it's, it's neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. Then open up at chapter 15. At 15, we go into some of the parables of the lost. The lost. We have the lost sheep of uh, one through seven, the lost coin of eight through ten, and then the lost son, eleven through the end of the the, 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 the chapter. In the lost sheep, he says, which one of you have a hundred sheep 
and, 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 and one goes missing, he'll leave the 99 and go out and find that one. And when he, he carries that one back, there's a great rejoicing. He said, and then when there's a lost coin, he says, if a widow lose a woman loses a coin in the house, she's gonna sweep that whole house until she finds mm -hmm. that one coin. When they find that coin, they rejoice. When they find that sheep, they rejoice. He said, it's like the lost son. When they the son, the parable of the two sons, when he, the, the, the greedy boy said, Daddy, give me my inheritance. Uh, he gave it to the boy. The boy had a party. Went out and lived in riotous living. When he lived out there in riotous living, a famine came in the land. And that's how it normally happens. When you're out there having fun, a famine will take over. And before you know it, you'll be overwhelmed and you wind up in a hog pen. The boy wound up in a hog pen. He went from a dance hall to a hog pen. And while in that hog pen, he was ready to eat the hog's husk. He's ready to eat the hog food. But then he realized, he thought to himself, my father's servant got food and, and more. What am I doing in a hog pen? The Bible says when he came to himself, I don't know who he was, but when he came to himself, he had lost his mind. But when he came to himself, I, I kind of know because we've all been there. We all were living in sin. We know who we was. But when the Lord opened our eyes, we was able to see what God wanted us to be. Mm. And when we went to the Father, the Father saw us coming and ran to us and received us, had a party for us. And because he had a party for us, had a great time for us, the other son got mad. Mm. And the father responds to the son. He says, son, your brother who was lost has come home and we have a right to celebrate. What the Lord is saying, every time an unbeliever come walking down that aisle, every time mm -hmm. a believer who is repentant and coming to rededicate, we as children of God ought to question where you've been, mm -hmm. ought to challenge them, you coming again. We ought to be glad they had the audacity and the God-given will, the God-given sense to come to themselves and be willing to come back to the house of God mm -hmm. and be willing to come back to the family of God. My wife told me to stop preaching. That ain't right. They, they, ought, to be, they ought to be willing. They ought to be willing. They ought to be willing. We ought to be willing to celebrate that they come back and embrace them, realizing that they are now back in God's family. They are back comfortable mm -hmm. walking by they thank you. Oh, I, oh what, a, what a blessed good time. What a blessed good time. And, and, and then we look at, uh, go to chapter 16. We are already in chapter 16, the parable of the unrighteous servant. And then 16 and 16, the law and the kingdom of God. 16 and 18, he talks about divorce. And then 16 and 19, he talks about the rich man and Lazarus. That's a good story. Then you get a chance. You want to read that one. 16 and 19. Kind of do a little study on that one. You talk, you see how there's a separation between those in glory and those in hell. And those in hell are gonna be burning up, always on fire, never, never getting any relief. He asks, he asks, can can Lazarus just bring me some some water? And no, he can't, he can't come to you. He said, Well, send Lazarus to my brothers who are alive because. I don't want them coming here where I am. And, and if Lazarus go back from the dead and talk to them, they, they, they'll hear him. He said, no. They, though, if Lazarus go, they're not going to hear him. If they don't hear the ones who preach it now, then they're not going to be saved. And so let, we got to let everybody know that we've got to learn how to hear the gospel and learn how to appreciate the gospel. And then 17 and 1, always forgive. Always forgive. 17 and 11, Jesus cleanses 10 lepers. Jesus cleanses 10 lepers. And, and, and while they were gone, while they were gone, they were getting clean. And when they got clean, uh, one turned back and said, I got to go tell him thank you. 
17 and 20, he talks about the kingdom of God. And then 17 and 24, we close when Jesus comes again. Isn't that wonderful? When Jesus comes again and the Lord is coming back. Yes, sir. When I was, uh, when we were kids, we had a game called hide and seek. And uh, we, 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 when the, the counter would count, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, there's a bluebird on my shoulder. Can I kill it? <laughs> we, had, we used to have, we used to have, we used to have some hide and go seek, uh, uh, and, and when they and, and when they would play that hide and go seek, and, and when he was ready to come get you, he'd holler, "Ready or not, here I come." That's what the Lord is saying. Mother. Whether you're ready or not, ain't no time to get ready. Hmm. Time to be ready. Time yes, to sir. be about being ready for the Master. He's on his way. God bless you, and may God keep you. Thank you so much, my brothers and my sisters. We had a good time yes, tonight. Yes, sir. I, I had could, a good time You could have kept on preaching. I had, I had a good time Preach tonight. on, Pastor. God, God bless you. God keep you. We prayerfully will see you all on Sunday morning at Sunday school. We are ready to have a, a great time in Sunday school. Invite your children and your grandchildren to be on conference call, to be in Google Meets, and to be on Zoom con. We want you to get them involved. Next week, we won't be here on Friday because we're going to have Thanksgiving worship. Well, I'm going to be able to uh, to be have the worship here at the church at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock in the morning on uh, Thanksgiving. It's, it's a little different. It's going to be 9 o'clock. We're going to FaceTime at 9 a.m. Amen? And so we thank God for you. Thank you so much. We, we'll see you on Sunday. And we give more definition as to our Thanksgiving uh, and everything else. All right? In, in your closing prayer, pray for Tenille Sykes and her family. Amen. We're going to pray for Tenille Sykes and her family. Is there any others that we need to pray for tonight? <clears throat> Sister Johnson's family. I can't. Sister Johnson's family. All right. We're going to go in prayer. We thank you. God bless you. Father, we thank you tonight for all that you have done. You have blessed us abundantly above all that we can expect or ask for. Your hand of mercy has allowed us to have life, health, and strength. And then, Father, we thank you for your grace, which always supplies our needs. We pray that you will have your way in our lives. Oh God, that will be useful tools to your glory. We bow now before your presence because you told us whatever we need, ask. We're asking now that you will touch the Tenille Sykes family. Father, we know that you're able to do all things but fail. We pray that you will touch Sister Mary Johnson's family. Yes, sir. We pray that you will comfort her spirit. A whole family, oh God, they need your strength. And then God bless all of those. Deacon Somerville and his family lost a brother. And then a few days later, lost a sister-in-law. Yes. Oh God, strengthen them. Yes. Keep them. And then God, we thank you for all you're doing right now. We have pains in our body. We have issues in our homes. We have problems on our jobs. We can't come to church, but Lord, we still can tell you thank you. Thank you. We give you the glory. Oh, bless your name. We give you all of the honor and the praise. We think about how good you are. We realize that God, we complain sometimes. We act like that man that complained because he had no shoes. Mm -hmm. But God, till he saw that man that had no feet. God, we want to tell you thank you. Thank we you. may not have all that we think we ought to have, but we have you. Yes, sir. And that's enough. Thank you. That's a plenty. Thank we you. thank you, Lord, that you will not forsake us. Continue to smile upon us, and we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Yes. And then now, Lord, one of these old days, we're going to quit the walks of life. 
Pray that you meet us, Master. Please, Lord. Down at Jordan's River. Well, 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 will you carry us over to the other side and we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and praise forevermore. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord. in the Thank name you. of Thank Jesus. You. You. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. We love you one and all. Go with God and go in peace. Good night. Thank you.